Neptune, the eighth and farthest planet from the sun. Officially discovered in 1846, this planet is the only one to have been found by mathematical prediction as opposed to observation. Because of its blue appearance, Neptune was named after the Roman god of the sea. In Greek mythology, he is known as Poseidon. Neptune was controller of the waves and storms, and this planet was named after him for good reasons. Winds on Neptune can reach speeds up to 600 meters per second. The trident Neptune wielded became the planet's official symbol. Good evening, everybody. My name is Dr. Kent Dalen, and with me today is my associate, Dr. Ted Pittenger. Thank you. Today we will be discussing and speculating everything you need to know and learn about Neptune. Thanks, Dr. Dalen. Now that you all have some basic facts about Neptune, we're going to start by giving you an idea of the planet's size and place in our solar system. For this, we're going to take you to our reporters in the field, Jack Gumbart and Chuck Humphreys. Thanks, Kent. Thanks, Ted. I'm Jack Gumbart, and this is my associate, Chuck Humphreys. Now, the Earth's diameter, as you may know, is roughly 12,756 kilometers. But as you can see, Neptune dwarfs Earth with a diameter of roughly 49,500 kilometers. That's just amazing. I'll tell you what, it sure is. Well, yeah, I mean, look out, look at the comparison. It's just stark. Wow. Neptune is a gaseous planet, unlike Earth. Still, Neptune's mass comes in at an overwhelming 1.0243 times 10 to the 26 kilograms. In non-scientific notation, this is what that number would look like. Neptune's single mass would equal over 17 Earth masses and with 15 times the surface area of Earth. And though Neptune is much more massive than Earth, its average density is less than one-third of ours, coming in at a mere 1.66 grams per centimeter cubed. The average distance from the Sun to the Earth is approximately 150 million kilometers, or one astronomical unit. The distance between the Sun and Neptune is approximately 30.06 astronomical units. And since this planet is so much farther away from the Sun, the light appears 900 times dimmer than light on Earth. Yet it is so far away, its albedo remains somewhat similar to Earth's. Earth's is at 0.39 or 39%, while Neptune's is 35%, which is pretty close considering how far apart they are from each other. Now look how far we had to walk just to get to Neptune from the Sun. This distance is equal to 4,499,000,000 kilometers. Back to you, Ted and Kent. So I bet you are wondering why Neptune is blue. I know I am. Well, let me tell you. Neptune's atmosphere is composed mainly of hydrogen, approximately 80%, while the rest is helium and methane. And since methane absorbs red light, the planet appears to be a bluish-green color. Thank you, Dr. Dalen. Since Dr. Dalen has informed you about Neptune's atmosphere, I'll bet you're all wondering what the rest of the planet is made of. Well, it's really quite simple. This mantle is composed mainly of slushy ice and other rocky materials. And though it is only speculation at this point, the core is believed to contain some heavy element. So you could say the core of Neptune is hard? Indeed. It is, in fact, hard core. The three rings surrounding Neptune are named after the astronomers involved with the planet's discovery. The innermost ring is named after the German astronomer Johann Galle. The second after French astronomer Urbain Le Verrier, and the third after English astronomer John Adams. Not only do these rings contain debris and dust, they are home to some of Neptune's multiple moons, which our reporters in the field, Jack Gumbart and Chuck Humphrey, will kindly explain for us. Before the Voyager 2 spacecraft visited Neptune, only two of its moons were known to exist. After the craft surveyed the planet in 1989, six more small moons were discovered among its rings. Since then, a few more have been discovered through Earth-based telescopes. Neptune's two largest moons are named Nereid and Triton. Now back to you in the studio, Kent and Ted. Here's something I'll bet you didn't know. Neptune is home to the only large satellite that orbits in retrograde, Triton. More simply put, Triton is the only moon that orbits its planet backwards. Did you know this, Kent? No, Ted, but I'll bet I know who does. Our longtime colleague and friend, Dr. Steve Clarkman, who flew in all the way from the Star Lab in Burbank, California. Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Clarkman, and thanks for having me. I did, in fact, know that Triton orbits 
in retrograde. Thanks for the confirmation, Dr. Clarkman. There's pizza and coffee in the lobby. Now, we all know that the Earth is tilted on an axis. That axis ranges from 21 degrees to a little over 24 degrees. Let me show you. That's at 24 degrees. Okay, and Neptune's axial tilt is somewhat similar, but with a little extra at 28 degrees. That's 28.32 to be exact. That's pretty interesting stuff, Kent. But did you know that Neptune is home to some extremely cold weather? Well, it is. The average temperature at Neptune's cloud tops is somewhere around negative 216 degrees Celsius, or 57 Kelvins. I'll tell you, Kent, I wouldn't want to be there without a jacket. Well, now that that's out of the way, it's time to talk about Neptune's orbital period as well as its period of rotation. Neptune spins on its axis just a little bit faster than Earth spins on its, so its days are about two-thirds the length of ours, approximately 16 hours and 3 minutes, as opposed to an Earth day, which is 24 hours. And though the days are shorter, a year on Neptune is much longer. It takes Neptune 164.7 Earth years to make one full revolution around the Sun, or 60,189 days. And here's an interesting fact to mark on your calendar. On July 12, 2011, Neptune is scheduled to complete its first full orbit since its official discovery in the 1840s. Though Neptune does not quite orbit the Sun in a perfect circle, it comes quite close. The eccentricity of Neptune's orbit is about 0 .01, which is not that far off from Earth's eccentricity, 0 .0167. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today, folks. We hope that you guys had as much fun as we did learning about Neptune. And we hope that this information stays with you for the years to come. We would sincerely like to thank our colleagues, Dr. Steve Clarkman, Jack Gumbart, and Chuck Humphreys. Signing off, Kent Dalen. And Ted Pittenger. Thank you.